Hello, everyone, and welcome to the official launch of Avila University. We will be starting in just a few moments. And today uh, we are celebrating the uh, launch of Avila University, and we are excited to see you among us. All right, I see people are joining more and more. Hello, yes. Uh, greetings from Kiev, Ukraine. Hello, uh, Ukraine. Uh, and actually, today uh, we are celebrating the launch of Oslo University. So thanks for joining us. An institution which we are super excited about, thanks to the opportunities it presents to you and your students. And we hope that you are looking forward to learning more about this historic institution before becoming a partner and sending applications. For the ones that are joining us for the first time, I am Gurur and I am our host today. I'm the community manager and the, and the part of the GAS International Business Development Marketing Department where we make sure all the latest updates and exciting news from gas institutions are delivered to our global network of partners, to all of you. So before we get started, I would like to remind everyone of the live chat and Q&A features of this webinar. So we will be here in the live chat, posting links and other important details during the session. If you have any questions, uh, for the panel and for the information that we provide, please use the QA box you see across the bottom toolbar on your screen. And any questions we don't get to during the session will be answered via email. So today's session will be recorded and shared with you all. So please feel free to forward the recording to all your colleagues who were not able to join us today. So in today's session, we will be introducing you to our guests who will tell you a little bit more about what makes them such great addition to Gas Gateway and soon your portfolio. Then we're more ahead, Director of Strategic Operations and Growth in Uni. Hello, Denver. Thanks for being here. Hi, Guru. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Really, really excited. Uh, welcome uh, to all of the uh, attendees. Uh, looking really, looking forward to, to speaking with you all uh, and you all learning about Pabli University. Great to hear them. Well, thank you. Okay, guys, it's time to begin. I'm going to pass you over to Denver to start presenting the location of Avila University. Denver, can you give us an overview about the destination? Yeah, absolutely, Guru. So once again, thank you for attending. Um, it's really, really exciting to talk about Avila University and the great prospects that it has. Overall, um, Avila University, it has more than 100 years um, of heritage. And I'll go into this a little bit more of the heritage shortly. But in terms of where it's actually based, we get this question a lot. And as you know, the United States is a really, really big area. So the question of where is Avila, it's actually based in Kansas City, and in Missouri. So it falls right in the middle of the state lines in between both. So you could say it's in Kansas City, but also could say it's in Missouri. So it falls right in between the middle, and it's also based in the Midwest in terms of an overall location. 
So for those of you that don't know um, the predominant location or have not been there before, so it's based within the greater Kansas City metro area. Uh, which is a vibrant city, flourishing with suburban communities, rolling hills, and treeline boulevards as well. In terms of an overall demographic and, and breakdown of a number of people and, and, and living there, overall in 2023, the population counted was just uh, under 510,000. So what that means is that Missouri is actually the 37th largest uh, city in the United States. So for any of you that are looking for you know, bustling cities, good culture, and a mixture of, you know, different opinions and lifestyles, definitely, you know, Kansas City and Missouri is the place to be. I don't know if you guys know this, but it's actually been referred to as the city of fountains, uh, since it boasts more outdoor features than any other city uh, outside of Rome uh, as well. Wow, and that sounds exciting. Absolutely, no, it's absolutely great. And definitely people that want that cultural aspect, but along with having, you know, a separate suburban feel, Kansas City and Missouri is a fantastic location. And I think just to end on it, um, the location boasts um, a very excellent growing industry uh, or range of companies that are coming towards Kansas City. So it's actually turned into Silicon Prairie. And what you'll find is a lot of manufacturing tech um, industries are moving from places like California, based on cost of living, quality of life, to Kansas City and setting up regional offices or head offices are there as well. So for those of you that are looking to, to, to speak with parents and students about having one sort of a downtown city feel, but at the same time having a community culture as well and sort of a quiet culture, you've got a mixture of the two. So that's a bit about Kansas City, the opportunity and just the excellent prospect it has for international students. Great insights, Denver. Uh, good to hear. I'm sure our partners would like to know what makes Avila University such an exciting prospect for our international students. Whenever you are ready, Denver, take it away. Absolutely. So, I mean, there's a range of things that I could say, so I'll try and keep it uh, more to the point. So actually, as I mentioned, it's got more than 100 years of heritage. So naturally, you know, for those uh, of our partners and, and those parents or students or applicants that are looking to have a uh, go to an institution that's got culture, that's got history, and that's got a background in terms of the stability that it stands for, Avila is definitely one of those institutions. So it actually started in 1866. Um, where Francis Joseph Ivory came to Kansas City to start a small school um, called St. Teresa's Academy. And it was in honor of actually St. Teresa of Avila in Senev. Shortly after her arrival, and then for more than 25 years, um, St. Teresa's Academy was actually the only school providing more than, uh, more than an elementary education for women in Kansas City. So during that time, it's actually emerged from 1916 and was received accreditation to become a university from 1930 onwards. So you can see that it's definitely got a strong standpoint of teaching, culture, and heritage. Moving to the institution itself, one of the things that it focuses on, Avila, is being a very tight-knit community. Now, what you'll find is that there are a lot of institutions across the world that have, you know, one lecturer to 100 students. And sometimes that can be quite daunting in the fact of, you know, maybe putting up your hand to ask a question and being lost in the overall big picture feel. Avila works in a different way where it actually wants to challenge the students, bring them out of their shell. And to do that, they build up a relative one to one structure on all aspects of their, of their development, not just academic teaching but also support, careers, you know, personal matters, everything that happens from there. And that's why it's class sizes average on that one to 12, but also the overall academics themselves, more than 70% of the actual academics who will teach you or your students will actually be PhD qualified. So in regards to other larger institutions, what you'll find is that there's commonly a teaching assistant or a junior assistant that's taking your lecturers and every so often the academic will come in and say, hey, how's things going? Or are you up to date for your assignments or anything like that? Avila works in a different way where they're always accessible in terms of your teaching, your seminars, your learning and just your overall general progression. So smaller and more refined is Avila's approach, but it doesn't mean less. It actually means more in terms of value for money and outcome and experience. And I think what I'd last place, what I'd say is actually the location itself, not just in terms of Kansas City, as I mentioned, but the university campus being as a suburban environment, which means that you have peace and quiet in order to focus on your studies and development 
but also, you know, get used to a different culture. It is very daunting, um, you know, when you travel thousands of miles to a different country and you don't have mum and dad, you don't have, you know, your contact, you don't have your friends. Therefore, you really want some time to really soak in the atmosphere and that's when you start to learn a bit more. So the community film of the university, of its support staff, of its academics, of the location, and also the added sprinkling benefit is Kansas City residents actually get free public transportation. So wherever you're looking to go, you know, outside of the, the campus to downtown or, you know, shops or whatever it might be, you get free public transportation. And that's why it wants to become an inclusive environment for all international students um, with the university. So those are definitely some of the core aspects about why have the university is a great institution, but also why it cares so much. Denver, uh, you already said really good core uh, information with us, but I'm pretty sure you have more. So uh, what would you say if you could highlight some points to choose, Avila? Ah, definitely core. Well, there's quite a few. Uh, I'll try and keep it to one or two. As I mentioned, the intimate feeling of teaching and learning. All right. So the class sizes are definitely one of my main favorites. Um, from what we have had previously is with international students, They've personally been met um, by the academics either at the airport or have actually had dinner in the president's house. And that's something that is constantly wanted to have in terms of international students really not being called international students, just being called students and really feel part of that community. So that definitely is one of the core aspects that I recommend. But overall affordability, you know, studying in a different country is expensive. Probably studying in your home destinations is expensive enough. Now, we understand that, and Avila understands that as well, and what they've done is, is look at what the market is, is telling them, you know, what our B2B partners are acting on, and developing a pricing model for its tuition and its fees and its living to make sure that it is attractive to international students, but also at the same time, international students do not struggle, do not have to think about you know, how they're going to pay for, you know, living or expenses or food or shopping. And therefore, for the majority of the time, they can simply focus on their education and really develop personally. So affordable programs. And then lastly, the overall range of programs that we offer in terms of, you know, whether it's STEM or non-STEM based, the institution itself is, is a liberal arts institution, which gears towards actually widening accessibility. But again, its key is to try and you know attract a wider range of students and not pigeonhole anyone. Hence, which is one of the range of programs which we offer at this particular moment in time, which I'm sure we'll get to in, in one or two of the next slides. So those are two of the three most amazing parts of why you know applicants, parents, need to be partners should recommend Avila and why it's such an, an effective destination and positive experience. All right, thank you, Demo, for providing our partners with further insights uh, into Avila. I can already tell that this is going to be a popular institution amongst applicants from all around the world. Demo, can you share uh, a little bit more about the unique portfolio of programs we offer on Avila. Yes, uh, I absolutely can. So as you can see from the relevant slide here, as I mentioned, Avila is about uh, accessibility, uh, about liberal arts, and about students expressing themselves. So what it doesn't do is try and, you know, focus students on one particular area, whether it's subject, majors, or teaching. What you'll probably find, and this is this is you know, quite common, is that when students uh, are arriving to their destination or arriving to even their decision of where to study, we found that they've, they've had sort of a set way of studying right, for, from the ages of probably six all the way to 16 or 18, depending on the educational structure. And we find that that's been quite set and quite rigid. What Avila wants to do is, is kind of have the student step outside um, of that comfort zone and have more power and control over what they want to do and take a bit more strength and direction in terms of different electives, different focuses of programs. So, for example, a person may come into a program thinking, you know, I want a, a potential uh, major in international business, for example. But once they're starting to start the program, meet with the academics, find out more about the curriculum and how it's enhancing them, we commonly find that students think, do you know what, I'm going to go in a different direction. And that's why Avila has a wide array of undergraduate programs. And as you can see, it focuses on the more familiar programs of business finance, you know, international business, management, but it also is growing its portfolio in STEM, having computer science, 
and cybersecurity as well. So those are the aspects in terms of looking at the STEM and non-STEM aspects as well, but also looking at the more creative elements, like such as music, theatre, liberal arts, uh, and English, which again, different regions have different desires to do different subjects. And I realize it's definitely all about accessibility and tries not to sort of pigeonhole or close anyone in into one particular field, especially when they haven't committed to their overall, you know, career or future or whatever it is that they want to do in the future. So quite a wide range in our undergraduate programs. And as we move on to the grad programs, as you can see here, mostly focused towards the business area. The biggest interest, as you would probably expect, comes from our MBA programs. And again, the fascinating thing is that these applicants don't have to choose their major on day one. Right? They don't have to commit their, the next 20 to 30 years on this one decision. Quite the opposite, where you, you take the MBA, start with it, and then as you find your way through, then decide, oh, okay, you know, I'd like to have a career within marketing or, or you know, counseling, whatever it might be in the future. It's about students building up autonomy building up their critical thinking and taking control of their overall careers. And just as the last point of what I'd say is that we've actually introduced uh, three new programs that are coming on board, which are STEM programs. So uh, as you can see here, uh, these are actually gone live now for the full intake um, as we're approaching in August. So they're STEM focused uh, and they're MS programs. So one is in data analytics, computer science and cybersecurity. So again, we've received, you know, a lot of queries and demand and questions asking us, you know, where is the, the potential for STEM? And Avila has listened and definitely wants to move forward in growing that STEM-based portfolio. So these are the first of a long list of programs that are going to be coming over the next 18 months. So very exciting times. Wow, that is really valuable. Um, so my students will uh, receive high quality teaching and also a lot of opportunities by uh, diversity of programs. I'm sure it can't wait to hear how the admission process works for your students. And then wait, please give us an overview about the details. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, the, it's always one of the most important questions that comes along with the body of entry requirements. So, um, as you know, within the, the United uh, States system, it works on the GPA, so it's a great point of average uh, in terms of how your qualifications internationally are calculated and reviewed. So very simple, uh, as we try to be all of the time for our partners, is on a GPA basis for our undergraduate boat programs and our graduate programs, we take it out of a scale of four, okay? So for a GPA undergrad, you would need a 2.5 or above, and then for our grad programs or postgraduate programs, as it's commonly called, you'd need an overall 2.75 out of the 4.0 scale. Now, for those um, applicants, as again, Avila is definitely about accessibility. For the grad programs, if we do receive applicants that have an overall GPA just under that 2.75, so again, you know, here we're looking at either between 2.5 and 2.74, then we would consider those applicants as well. So definitely we wouldn't advise that you turn them away. We would still ask you to follow up with the application, provide the necessary documents, and therefore we would look to work with Avila in terms of looking where their strong points are, where their negative points are, and seeing what overall can be produced for the, 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 the students, the parents, um, and just so a solution can be arrived at. So that's the core aspect in terms of the GPA requirements. With the English proficiency, um, I'm very sure that a lot of you know all of these common tests that are accepted. Um, IELTS, uh, so for undergrad, you need a 5.5. And we also, and this is a 5.0 in every band, sorry, 5.0 with a 5.0 in every band, I should say. Um, we also accept TOEFL, Duolingo, and PTE. So all of the common language tests that I'm very, very sure that you are familiar with. Now, for um, depending on the scores that you receive, you either can receive a conditional admit or you receive a normal admit. So a normal admit means that you're admitted without any conditions. Conditional admit means that you're admitted, but you'd have to go through uh, what we call is a leveling program. And what that means is you'd have ESL support um, and the program would also focus on the intensive period of maths to make sure that you're brought up to speed uh, and don't fall behind and can keep up with your classmates uh, within the first year. So that's the difference between an admit and a conditional admit, depending on what the, the language scores that you receive overall.
Well, it's pretty exciting. So we know that the United States of America is the number one study destination in the world with over a million international students studying here annually. Denmark, can you explain about tuition fees and costs for our partners? I absolutely can. So what you're seeing here is, is an overall breakdown of everything that you will need, which is a common question on how much will I need? How much does it cost? What will I need to do for living and expenses? So an excellent point, an excellent question. So I'll start with the tuition first. So for our tuition and fees for our undergraduate program, the overall tuition is 37,750 USD, and that's on a yearly basis. The undergraduate programs are four years in duration. Now, that's just the tuition and fees. Naturally, you're going to need room, you're going to need board, you're going to need health insurance, and provide books, et cetera. So for room and board, um, and this is based on an average of double room with a full meal plan, uh, which is three meals on a daily basis, you would have to have just over $9,000. So $9,255 for health insurance, which is compulsory, just to be clear, all international students must have health insurance uh, when they on or before when they enroll for the program. And that amounts to just under $2,000, uh, so $1,784 to be precise. And what we've calculated is an overall average um, of books, miscellaneous, you know, extracurricular activities, what you might need to spend on. And that comes uh, just over $3,280. Now, to be clear, these are the minimum amounts and what you would need overall. So again, you know, if you want to have $5,000 for your overall books and, 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 and miscellaneous, that's absolutely fine. This is an overall guide of the minimum amounts of what you would need in order to satisfy the institution, but also satisfy the overall requirements to apply for your visa. So these particular fees are for the undergraduate. Now, there's probably a question going to come in terms of scholarships available. I will come to that uh, very shortly, but I'll break down the grad, uh, the grad page next, uh, and then I'll go into the scholarships after that. Yes, thank you for saying that scholarship is one of the subjects that we, our agents, our partners are most uh, wondering about. So this is really important for us, Denver, please. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. I'm going to I'm going to get to that. Um, so with <laughs> fees, um, the grad programs are two years uh, in duration or you know, 18 to 24 months to be more specific. On a yearly basis, the overall fees are $10,800. So times that by two is 21,600 USD. Now with room and board, health insurance and other program costs as well, you know, you're looking at a total on a yearly basis that you need to have is 20, 25,000 USD, just to put an overall real number on it. But to be more specific, it's 24,537, which you need to show on your bank accounts. Okay, now, uh, as Guru mentioned, scholarships. So uh, the question that's commonly asked, are there international scholarships? Absolutely, yes, uh, there are. So what are they is the question. So as I mentioned, and as you can see, the original fees or tuition fees of undergraduate on a yearly basis is $37,750. Now, we, uh, Avila is offering scholarships, international scholarships, I should say, of up to 15,000 USD dollars per year. So that means over the four years, an international applicant for a UG program can get up to $60,000, which means that on a yearly basis, after the scholarships, the applicant will be expected to pay 22,750 USD. So that's for our UG programs or undergraduate programs. For grad, as I mentioned, uh, 10,800, two years, it means it's 21,600. For our grad programs, we um, offer up to 2,500 USD per year, so 5,000 in the overall duration of the program. That means after scholarships, um, applicants would receive, or sorry, would be expected to pay $8,300 per year, uh, which is 16,600. USD for the overall program. That does depend on the amount of credits that you take, but overall, this is the average and these are the up to amounts that you can receive for an international scholarship. So they are available for international applicants. Um, you don't need to, or your applicants don't need to do anything extra in order to be applicable or be uh, eligible, I should say, for this scholarship. All they would need to do is make sure that they have the necessary requirements, ensure that they are 
eligible for the program and have received an admit letter. Once they've received an admit letter, the scholarship would then be allocated to that particular applicant's account. Um, so nothing further is required from you from our clients. So those are the overall scholarships available. Um, we're hoping that they're going to be exceptionally helpful for our international students um, and our community as well. That is great to know. And actually, from uh, if you look from the student perspective, another uh, subject that is really crucial and important for students is living costs. So actually, uh, can we illuminate our partners on that then, Lauren? Yeah, so I mean, overall living living costs, um, as I mentioned previously, usually the sort of the two, three main areas is, is housing, um, is meal plans, and then it's also miscellaneous, uh, I call it, but miscellaneous is books, um, it could be potential travel, um, although you wouldn't really need to travel because everything on the campus is centrally focused. So in theory, you never need to leave the campus, you're able to teach there, you're able to get your food there, there's sports clubs, there's gym, you can exercise, there's communities, there's international clubs, you know, the list can go on in terms of what is available for international applicants. So traveling shouldn't really be uh, one of the main focuses, but also, as I mentioned at the beginning, you get free transport being a Kansas City resident. So there's all benefits overall, over, uh, all round. From the, the housing perspective, there are a range of, of particular program, uh, particular costs are associated. So as you can see, it does range uh, in terms of the cost on a yearly basis, uh, on, on a semester basis as well. So we know that some people like to live, you know, on their own, some people like to live with others, or some people like to live in a bigger room or a smaller room. As you can see from the slide, you know, we can go up to $7,100 for an overall suite uh, for an international student to live in luxury. Or, you know, more commonly, they go between the mid range. So naturally, what we always like to do is have our applicants live on campus, uh, reason being, we want to have them immerse in the overall international culture, the feel of things, uh, and really immerse themselves within the first six to 12 months. Usually after they've adapted, that's when you'll find that they venture further out and they get to explore the city, they get to explore different states, but we want them fully acclimatized to the in overall international experience. So housing is available from Evilam and also meal plans. We get that, you know, finding the local superstore or really settling down within the first couple of weeks and months is difficult. And that's why Avila offered the meal plans inclusive of the housing as well, just to make sure that you're not thinking about, oh, I need to run to the store, which is eating into your studying and learning and development time. So those meal plans also are available for international students to include. So in theory, as I mentioned from the beginning, you don't have to go anywhere in order to be fed, in order to be taught, in order to get exercise. So, and again, that's the overall design purpose of, of having a fully functional integrated campus uh, available to, to our students and our community. Sounds like a fully acute facility. And uh, then we uh, actually are uh, partners uh, feel responsible uh, for the students after they send uh, their students to the institution. And it is actually really important uh, from the family perspective as well to support the student inside the institution. So how Evila supports uh, students? Yeah, it's a really good question. I think that, you know, sometimes we all, we all get lost in the overall um, lead up uh, and sort of the recruitment period of, you know, getting a visa, success of getting a visa. and. Exactly. Then, sometimes in behind the scenes people say what's next and we're like uh you know and that's where Apple has really sort of tried to pay attention a lot more in terms of that stage two and that handover period between you know you guys as partners to the institution while keeping in touch with, with all three of us and you know one thing that they do is they break it down into relevant areas so via the splitzer center of, of center of excellence it breaks down in terms of personal services. As we know, you know, there could be some emotional sadness of leaving home countries, missing mum and dad, the things I've mentioned at the beginning. And sometimes you'll find that there's a ro roller coaster of emotions where they're very excited to travel, then they arrive and then it sort of kicks on them and then they're excited and then, you know, they're sad and they're excited. And we want them to keep them on a level keel of, of emotion uh, when they're traveling to the United States, but when they're also embedding into a new culture. And that's where the overall support center or the student access office at ABLE, along with our counselor service, are all just to ensure that, you know, personally, medically, they're absolutely fine. They're coping with being in a new area. 
they are settling in well, they are coping with their studies from an academic success and tutoring perspective, they are meeting their GPA because they don't, and obviously, you know, there's, there's issues there. But also, one thing that people don't think about is financial responsibility as well. You know, a lot, a lot of people may not know how to budget and may not think, okay, if I've got this for the semester, how do I break it down in weeks and budget effectively, inclusive of travel, you know, events, anything that I want to spend on top of food and natural and necessities that are with uh, becoming an international student. So these particular different departments focusing on financial security, counseling and personal information, um, Office of Student Success to make sure administration is up to date and we're in contact with you on a regular basis. Academic success, whether it's with academic support or whether it's with the professional tutors themselves to make sure that your GPA is up to date. And I suppose the last thing is our career center, which is all about, you know, what can I do after? What type of jobs can I get? The career service is there from the point that you start. And we always implore that you use it to the point of when you start your studies, not the point of when you complete your studies. Because the way that we see it and the way that Avila sees it is that when you're studying for four years or two years, depending on whether it's undergrad or grad, your journey towards starting your career starts then not when you graduate and that means you know cv building it up getting internships getting work experience making sure that you've got such a strong cv and as you know the global marketplace is such a competitive environment you want to make sure that you're in the best possible position so when you do complete your program you're able to say great i've got a ready-made cv i've got my references you know i'm, I'm, I'm i've spoken to 15 companies the year before and I've kept in contact with them I'm hoping to get an internship they're already on the road of developing and and really gaining a, an effective career and that's what Avila wants to do from day one not on the last day of their, of their studies and those are the core aspects in terms of student support and what we call as that sort of phase two of their learning and development Wow, from day one onwards, uh, we are taking care of the students. Uh, actually, that's, that must be some kind of a big relief uh, on the side of families and they, they would entrust their children. And actually, for our partners, it is really nice points to uh, highlight and uh, take it away uh, from this uh, session, actually. And um, if um, before uh, we talk about the career opportunities and uh, in after graduation, actually uh, it would be lovely to talk about um, intakes. Yes, very good. So with our overall undergraduate uh, intakes, so we work on three intakes a year for the undergraduate programs. Um, the, the more traditional ones are fall, uh, so August twenty three, and then spring, uh, which is in it's actually in February. And I know most people will recognize this January, but with Avila, it happens in February. So the next upcoming intake for, for us is actually August the 21st, and that's our full intake. So there's still time um, in order to, to, to squeeze applicants in if there is, a, is an interest of what we hope. Um, we also have a sort of a, an in-between intake, which is May. We call it the summer intake for our undergraduate applicants. We focus on those ones and keep those ones set because we want to have we want the applicants to have a traditional experience, you know, orientation, meeting other international students, really getting involved with sports clubs. And that's the reasons why, you know, we focus towards those two or three intakes on a, on a larger scale. For our grad programs, it works more um, on a rolling basis. So depending on the program, they we have intakes that occur every eight weeks. Um, Going back, the traditional intakes are the same as undergraduate. You've got the summer, you've got the fall, and you've got the spring. But in between, they have rolling intakes, depending on the program, every eight weeks. So, you know, if a visa appointment is late, if, you know, you're unable to travel at a set time, then you don't have to wait another several months. You're able to roll on uh, eight weeks and then start uh, in the next intake, and it doesn't disrupt you know, your living or your rent that you've paid for hopefully too much, as there's a lot of continuity uh, with the intakes. Wow. All right. Uh, a lot of intakes. Uh, that's good news. Uh, so, okay. We now know more on Avila and Avila's history, what makes them such a great institution for international students, as well as how students can succeed in their applications. I think you are ready to become an authorized representative of Avila University. I'll show you three options for you to start sending your applications. 
Uh, but if you would prefer talking on application process, then let's circle back and you can have it. And actually, you can, um, by this, would be create some kind of an excitement, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, with the overall application process, we try and, uh, well, we don't try, but we keep it very simple in terms of some of the documents that uh, we require. So I know, Guru, you're going to explain about the, the uh, gateway. Naturally, you know, the for Avila, it is pretty much the same process. So we'd need an, an application supported by, uh, for our undergraduate, you're going to need a passport, uh, your high school transcripts, or the equivalent of your local schooling transcripts and your mark sheets, if there are any certificates as well, great. Um, and also your proficiency uh, of English. Once we get those, um, we would then, you know, do a credit evaluation. We would do that internally, just to ensure that you've got the relevant GPA moving forward. For our grad programs, it's pretty much exactly the same documents, but we need a undergraduate transcripts and undergraduate degree. Um, for some of our speciality programs like kinesiology, we, we would need a CV and uh, two reference letters or letters of recommendation because it is a specialist program. And then on top of that, for both of the programs, we would need to see your financial documents, um, you know, your bank statement. If your bank statement is not in USD, then we need an accompanying uh, bank letter which shows the amount in uh, USD. Uh, there is a sponsor, then we need an alpha David of support. So, you know, about seven to eight documents, uh, depending on the program. So again, it's quite minimal, um, quite uh, straightforward. Um, and we know most of our partners are quite familiar with the documents that, that would be required. All right, this is the student application process, but before it, we need to tell our partners uh, the way to be a partner with uh, GAS first and then students come. Actually, I'm pretty sure that you like what you have heard already. So I will make this very explanatory uh, for you to not miss anything. But if you miss anything, please feel free to reach out to us. We will most uh, certainly uh, help you on any kind of a handicap, any kind of mishap that uh, you would come across. So uh, the three ways that we were going to talk about, one is uh, that you are right now screening on the left side of your screen, and it is the very first step of becoming a partner with uh, GAS. And actually, it is really, really easy. It is no different than just uh, signing up for a new platform. And uh, I'm pretty sure you already have another uh, partnership with Gus already. But let's take you through uh, to like refresh your memories. Okay. So what we see on the left side is the become a partner button. This is really crucial. And after... Um, just a simple click, you will be redirected to create your application uh, phase uh, to that website, to that interface, and you can just easily search, um, select the Avila University. And if you are already an existing partner, uh, you can on the right uh, screen, uh, you can just go and create your application as I just told before with choosing Avila University. And if you are a tech savvy person, you can right now get your phone and open your camera and scan this uh, QR code to take you to the uh, website that is most crucial for the um, this session, for the part of the session. All right, so that concludes today's session. Thank you for joining us. And actually, we really like to hear from you. And uh, I see that we have a couple of questions in the q a box. It is really uh, nice that uh, you are engaging. And actually, uh, I would like to take a, a little, um, a couple of questions. So uh, what I'm screening them were here. Um, yeah, does, um, does Avila uh, accept study gap uh, if, if student has some kind of gap here? It's, is it a problem? Um. No, it's it's not a problem uh, overall. So Avila, as I mentioned, it's about uh, accessibility uh, and really looking past um, some of the sort of traditional um, challenges that applicants face. Uh, in fact, 
Avila actually has a large uh, contingent of mature domestic learners um, who are studying, you know, from the age of 35, 45, um, who have also have gaps in their education or been to work for, you know, 10, 15 years. Um, and that's quite commonplace for them as well. So uh, applicants who have gaps, uh, irrespective of what it might be or the length, that is not a problem. The application documents would still be considered. Uh, we may ask a question just to find out, you know, what have you been doing in that particular time? We suspect it's probably working in employment, uh, but overall it is not a, a reason to reject an applicant or not consider an application. So Avila would love to see those, those particular people apply uh, and speak with them and get to know them more and take this for the application journey. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, then we, uh, we have, um... This, this is a common question and uh, our partners would like to know about the tuition fees again. I'm so sorry to ask again, but this is really crucial. So if you don't mind, can you please remind us those? Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of the tuition fees for undergraduate programs uh, on a yearly basis, uh, which is four years, it is uh, 37,750 USD. And for our overall grad programs, um, which is a two year program, it is $10,800 per year. Uh, so 21,600. Um, and as I mentioned, and as I'll always include, uh, there are international scholarships available. So on a yearly basis, applicants can get up to 15,000 USD per year for, for undergraduate programs. And for our grad programs, they are eligible to receive uh, up to 2,500 USD per year, $5,000 uh, in total for, for our programs. Uh, yeah, it is also always the valuable pre minds scholarships, but uh, I see a couple of uh, questions uh, regarding uh, unique cases. So if you would like to ask those, please ask away uh, and um, you can reach out to us or them anytime you like. Actually, um, I really would like to take the questions for a later time. Uh, and uh, for the moment of being, I would like to thank you for participating to today's session. It was actually a very fruitful, very productive session. I learned a lot, Denver. Thank you very much. It was a really nice session. <laughs> thank, thank you for having me. It's been great. I think um, it's been it's been a great presentation. The questions have been really, really fruitful. So, no, absolutely. Thank you. Um, we're always available to, to answer any questions, um, you know, the black and white ones or the gray ones also. So, please, yeah, <laughs> please do so. All right, that's amazing. Uh, really, really happy to have you. Uh, and also, please uh, watch the space. We will have uh, many sessions, uh, upcoming sessions regarding uh, the university. We would like to uh, like you to learn more on this uh, amazing institution. Uh, I'm seeing uh, thank yous over the chat. Thank you, actually. And we wish you a great day at the rest. Take care. Ciao. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you, Guru. Thanks. Thank you all. Bye.